Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with this week's um, Your Honor. We missed it last week. We didn't get the memo that it wasn't coming on, right. but everybody deserves a week off. But any hoodles, hope yeah. your week has been great. We're just going to go ahead and run it. And um, yeah. <laughs> Getting pretty interesting, man. Okay, Judge. <laughs> so now we're coming off the leg of what happened a couple of weeks ago where Judge LeBlanc. Yeah. Listen, if you're ever in Cabo, go to the LeBlanc um, Resort. Have a good guy doing time. But anyway, that's how I'm remembering her name. Is Judge LeBlanc now, she's out of jail because y'all know she got arrested for the DUI, mm -hmm. which was all set up by Judge Michael, her friend. Yeah. And so now they're giving her an ultimatum. And she doesn't want to take the ultimatum because the ultimatum is that she checks herself into uh, rehab. Like a, yeah, a sobriety type of rehab. But in that time frame, of course, she's not able to preside over any of the cases that she previously was qualified to preside over. Yeah. Which means that the case that she wants. Of course, we know that she wants this case again because she was in charge of getting him convicted the first time. Exactly. So she's like, you know what? Um, I'm going to go ahead and fight this because there's no one that's going to have balls enough to actually convict, convict a sitting judge. So here goes Judge Michael. And I'm like, okay, at this point, nobody's putting two and two together that you're behind all of this. Oh, yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm like, is y'all that yeah. naive? I'm like, I mean, it's like, it's on Front Street now. Yeah. So which, <laughs> what he <laughs> brought to the table was, he was like, so you haven't heard or you haven't seen let me go ahead and show you what's, um, what's floating around on social media. And it's just like when we see, you know, the injustices happening with pe against people of color. There's always someone recording and they leak it out to social media. Well, this is what happens when mm -hmm. it came to Judge LeBlanc. She was out there talking cash money skit to them, talking about some F you. Yep. Gotta, so pretty much making her look like, yeah, she has a yeah. drinking problem. Yeah, you need to go to class. <laughs> So at this point, she was like, oh, I think what I need to do to save my career, because in order for, um, in order to save her career, that meant she had to go into the rehab. Going into the rehab, everything will be expunged from her record like it never happened. And then she can continue on being the good judge that she is. So that's the, that's the choice that she had to make. Yeah. It wasn't a choice that she wanted to make. Yeah. But because this is out on Front Street now, that's what it is. So what does that do? Puts By the default. Case, puts the case right back in the hand of Judge Michaels. Which is what? What he wanted. What he wanted. Now, not what he wanted, what, what he, he needs needed. to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we're going through, um, and I'm going to jump ahead because if y'all look at this, y'all know. So we're sitting there now and we have, it seems... <laughs> Real life going on right now. Um, <laughs> well, it seems like it is, it is being filmed in the times of COVID-19. Yeah. So now they're saying, listen, we have to take precaution when it comes to this case. We're going to have closed court. We're going to have certain people that's going to be able to come and sit in. And then we're going to have to have to have this room clean thoroughly every night. But this is what we're going to do. We know they have the jurors selected, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Every time there is a piece of evidence that goes against, um, what's the boy's name? The backs the boy, Carlo. Carlo. Every, every stitch of thing that could come up against him that would be able to put the nail in the coffin for him, the judge finds a, a legal way to throw it out. To throw it out yep. and to make you unhear what you just heard. And I'm like, y'all can't see that? And then every time the attorney that's fighting to get a conviction against Carlos brings up something it no nope, can't I hear think, it. I think eventually she's going to figure it out because I love the way because at first I thought she was like annoying but I understand okay. her tactic and her strategy now she'll just blur stuff out but you don't know if it's her or she quoting somebody else yeah so I love it when she do that uh -huh. so I think eventually she's gonna start quoting the judge and he gonna say something and then she's gonna be like I'm talking about you Exactly. <laughs> That's what you said on that word of the life. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Yep. So now we're going through this thing. And what um, Carlo is trying to say is that he killed Kofi in self-defense. That, And then his attorney is saying, what would you do if you are a person that's in jail? Your home is a six by nine cell. And that is the place where you have refuge. This is your domain. 
and you sit there and you get a visit or you get a visit from the guy that you know killed your your brother a few days ago, a few weeks ago, and now he's at your residence. Do you feel that this is going to be a friendly conversation? So pretty much now they make a Carlo the victim yeah. of Kofi. And now that Kofi is dead, he was it was all in self-defense. Right. And I'm like this. If that is the case, how did Kofi get from his cell all the way to hit to Carlo's cell without a guard's assistance? So that means there was some coercion going on and that in that process. Too. Yep. And which did come up. And I'm like, okay, is this going to be liable to... See that this was put together by them? Yeah. Yeah, because ain't no way they was going to do that for Kofi. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to do that for their boy. They only going to do it for the Baxters. Uh -huh. So this is just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So you know how the jury things work. At the beginning of the jury shift, you have to turn in everything that's personal to you. You get it back at the end of the day. So they have, the bailiff have found a little piece of paper that was left in the juror box that says, can't something to the fact that um is it really self-defense in prison yeah or can, in can, you, can you can plead, you please self-defense in, in prison like that yeah and in jail and i was like i want to know the answer to, to that yeah because, that's a good question because that was written down on a piece of paper now judge michael has to do a process of elimination to find out which juror wrote that note so that he can figure out who is the juror that is that has the potential of doing a, a guilty verdict on Carlo. Because you know they can't get a gu guilty verdict right now. Right. Everyone has to be persuaded to say that it is self-defense. And because this one juror is asking that question, he knows that there is someone that is al that have already made their mind up that he is guilty. Mm -hmm. So eventually, as time went on, he ended up finding a piece of paper that I think he went through some records or something and he matched up the handwriting. Mm -hmm. So then what he ended up doing was doing some research on that juror, finding out what her weakness was. Her weakness is her daughter, of yep. course. And at this is really what happened, but she doesn't know what happened yet. The juror was brought into Judge Chambers, and he was like, the rules of my courtroom are the rules of my courtroom. And before you took on this position to judge your peer, yeah, it was told to you that you cannot look up the case. You can't look up anything surrounding the case. Nothing like that because we don't need you to be persuaded one way or the other. And she said, but I didn't do any of that. And he was like, well, why don't you hand me your phone and I can prove it right now. He goes into her phone, goes into her search engine history. And what's on her search engine history yep. is the case with the mother and the three children that's being blown up in the house. Yep. Which instantly disqualifies her from being a juror on this case. And she said, judge, I didn't do this. I didn't do this at all. But we all know that Judge Michael either himself he did, it, did it, it or he got somebody to do or it. Or he him. got someone else to do it while her phone was in the possession of the court. I, I said, obviously what? she didn't have a lock on her phone for I somebody to get into the phone. But Well, I don't know because they that's didn't. That's but anyway. <laughs> but but going back to when he was actually in the courtroom talking about about that where they couldn't do any of that stuff, I'm like, ain't somebody gonna pick that up now? Mm -hmm. that he's trying to help the Baxters win the case? Why would you not be able to look into... Well, you're into not supposed to. You're not huh? supposed to. Oh, you're not? Mm -mm. Oh, I ain't know that. No, because we oh. always get disqualified from it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't know. Yeah, every time. <laughs> so not because we do So we don't need wrong. you, sir. <laughs> we always get disqualified because we used to work with children and um, mentor children and things like that. Every case seemed to have a child involved. So mm -hmm. they was like, we know that you're going to side on the side of a child. Even if the child is not right in the case, so we always got <laughs> got booed. It's like, uh, uh, you, you have so a they, bias. They give us, send us home, and send us out checking the mail. Yeah, they be like, y'all have said, a long bias. As long as you pay me, bro, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so now let's go ahead and turn our sights back over to um, Judge Michael's son. Lord, what's the boy's name? Lord, look, uh, we have a, <laughs> we just Adam. We'd have had a, a skip week, and we'd have forgot names. So now we have Adam. Adam is being Adam, and he's still hanging out with the Baxter sister. But he is now... I, at first, I was like, okay, he's going along with the little cute ride. Now, he's really falling for her. You can't oh, yeah. tell me oh, anything. Oh, yeah. He's falling in love now. Yeah. But how about Teacher Bay? 
Y'all know Teacher Bay that he's sleeping with. Mm -hmm. Now she's making career moves and career decisions based off the fact that, okay, once you turn 18, we can be full out in the public about our relationship, but I can be close enough to the college that you're going to go to, but we can still continue our relationship. And I put in my resignation at this school so I could go ahead and finish out this semester and do the transfer. You make a whole life decisions, decisions. Yeah, based on, on a 17 year old? Yeah. That don't even know who, if he's accepted who, into that college or not. Or what he gonna do in life. Or if he really wants you. Or if he really wants you. Yeah. Because after the thrill is gone, see a lot of the thing is, it's the it's the it's the catch. It's not the catch, it's the race. Yeah. It, it's it's the hunt. Yep. <laughs> Once they catch you, they don't want you no more. But Especially when you're young. Especially when you're young. <laughs> so come to find out. We go fast forward a little bit. Adam didn't even get accepted into the school that he thought he was gonna get accepted nope. to. He ended up getting accepted into was in New York State. NYC. NYC, yeah. Where his daddy wanted him to go, which I think is so a really go good go plan away. to get away from New Orleans. And you wanna know I know what this fool said. I think I wanna stay close mm -hmm. to home. I wanna stay here because mama said to go deep and not wide. I'm like, yeah, you can you can say that. Mama did. When, yeah, you can say that when you ain't got a dead body on your hand, but when you got a dead body on your hand, you need to go wide. You need to go as far as away from the crime scene as you possibly can. But it seems like everything Judge Michaels tell him to do. He does the opposite. He does the total opposite. And Judge don't even know he hanging out with the backs of the daughter. Uh -uh, he don't you know that. He don't even know that yet. Oh, he finally had another asthma flare up, finally. Yeah. In front of the Baxter girl. And I said, go ahead and leave your inhaler in her car. Hmm. Just go ahead and leave it in. Cause he that, probably did. Because that ain't even came back up yet. Nope. So let's go ahead and back up a little bit. So y'all know Carl Baxter, the daddy. He don't told the judge in so many words, listen, I don't know what kind of skit show you running right now. And he put a cell phone in his pocket and told him, said, listen, you got a couple of days to give me a sure win of this case. And I need proof and I need evidence and I need names. I need you to, to tell me what that is. My number is the only number programmed in this phone. So when it rings, you answer. So he, him he, getting he, rid of that juror was a way of telling that, telling Mr. Basta, listen, I got it in the pocket. But in my mind, that lady is not going to let this go. No, nah, she's not going to let it go. Because nah. she told him immediately, she said, I'm going to take this to the press. That someone set me up to get me off of this case. Now her wheels are turning because if nothing's wrong, yeah. why did someone go in my phone and plug in some information? And this happened I after do? I submitted the question. So obviously the answer to my question is going to win the case. And so he so, told her, said, just go home to your daughter. Just know that usually I can judge what the, um, what the verdict is going to be on day one. And I assure you that that verdict is going to be what you want it to be. I go ahead and go, go home judge. to your life. Go ahead and go home to your door. Why even say that when you know that it's possibly going to be the opposite? But I'm going to tell you what's going to be judge's downfall right here, right now. Nancy, the mm. detective, lawyer Bay, the one that he, he met, he trying to get sweet with. She, she, cause she's, she's on the straight and narrow. I was thinking that until the way that Baxter is moving now and meeting with the judge in public. Like, for example, when after, after um they had the little raiment, and he came outside to breathe, that he is standing across the street looking at the judge. And that's when Nancy was out there looking was like. And then he stepped to Nancy was like, what's your yeah, name? What's, and she said, Nancy Costello and spelled it for him. Yeah. I said, so I'm so like, she ain't scared. I'm like. Bruh, Baxter, dude, why are you always meeting him in public, man? You you, you compromising the case. You know if somebody see you and him together, they're going to know it's a conflict of interest. Yep. And he showed up at the restaurant, too, when um Adam got his letter of acceptance for college. Yeah. They all went out together as a family yeah, just to show figure up. out what it was. And they sh just showed up. And yeah. they're outside talking. But you want to know who else is going to be a nail in the coffin for Judge Michael? Oh, the mama? His mother-in-law. Yeah. His mother-in-law said... Oh, she already see the bush get, She said, did you know that Carl Baxter was here? Because when I pulled up, he was rolling out. He said, oh, that's some kind of coincidence. I said, coincidence, you're presiding over a case that could put his son away. That he so happened to be at the same but restaurant here? he just here so happened to, to be, be at here? the same restaurant here? Yeah, nah. Oh, okay, okay. I said, Judge, you got a lot of explaining to do. Yeah. And... 
Every time I look at this, I think about that movie where LL Cool J called In Too Deep. Yeah, that's what like I thought about. Yeah. Like you're you in way so, too deep. You're yeah. in so deep. Yeah. To, and all of this because you didn't want it to be found out that your son killed this boy. All to just find out that <laughs> you killed the boy and you still had the same problems that you were trying to avoid. Yep. You still in cahoots with these bastards. I said I'd be a god, yeah, man. Joy. But I, I do. I love the um the attorney that is like, you know what? The Baxter boy is guilty as charged, and they yeah. even had a the um the previous victim that the um, Carlo Baxter bashed his head and did a curbside bash on him. This boy is walking with a cane. Yep. He took the stand and having PTSD, PTSD PTSD nightmares about it. Had yeah. him on the stand. Had the lawyer, I mean, had the doctor to come in and did the autopsy on Kofi Jones' body mm -hmm. and was like, uh, this was an overkill. Yeah. Um, there's no bumps or ridges in the walls of a cell. So in order for someone's brain and the matter of the of the um the fragments from the wall to be embedded in their skull, that force had to be something serious. And it was a bash of six times. Six times. So if you're in self-defense, why you got to do that six times? And then he had his skin under his fingernails, which yeah. means that it he was self-defense. He was fighting, fighting for, for his life, life and loss. Yep. So, yeah, that's pretty much where we are. With but, this. but you know what I actually thought was really going to really tip that other lawyer off when he was when she was trying to show those pictures? Um, in the courtroom of, of uh, Kofi, and he was like, "No, the, ju the the jury can't handle that. No, no." And I'm like, "They see with it a all case, the time. yeah. I mean, with a case like, yeah, I understand as a, as a common person, it's hard to look at somebody being bashed. But if I'm gotta be the person to make a decision on somebody's life going to prison forever or them being free, I'm I want to see everything. Everything. Even if I can't handle, it, even if I'm up there throwing up because I can't handle the blood. But here's yeah. the thing: they've already seen pictures of Kofi before, before the autopsy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they showed them pictures that's of right. before. Yeah, this is when the judge was trying to be all right with the case. Now he, yeah. he now he can't do a guilty um, verdict on this case. Yep. So I'm like, Judge, I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. So we got, we got, we got, we got two more, two, two more episodes, and um, you know. We, I, I don't, at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if the judge is going to go down, Adam going to go down, the back is going to go down. I don't either. Yeah. But, but now I'm still trying to figure out who killed the mama because there was something that was said. I can't remember what oh, it was Oh, yeah, now. he was saying what his mama used to do, which it sound cool, but it is kind of creepy, that she would go and take secret pictures of people and then send them the pictures and then tell her tell them why she did it and some of them will get mad and some of them didn't get mad. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what she was, she was doing. And I said, well, did she take the wrong picture? I think she took the wrong picture. And on the wrong day, they yeah. got to kill. I said, did the boxers have something to do with that too? She might have tried to take a picture of them when they was doing something stupid. But you know what? As much as I don't like Carl Baxter, it's something about his demeanor is so intriguing. Like he gives zero bucks. He don't. Yeah, he don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and I do love that about his demeanor. It's like, oh, but I need to talk to you. I don't but, care. But at the end of the day, I think his demeanor and the way he moved gonna get him in trouble. Get all of them in trouble. Yeah, that might be the that might be the end of the thing. All of them go to prison. All of them. All of them involved. Look, Judge LeBlanc, <laughs> hurry up and complete your sobriety classes. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. And get back out and use that brain yeah, power. But if anything, I would have thought she would have picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought, because you mama, when she took the shot at the restaurant, when the judge was talking all that bullshit, she was looking at him there like, what is whatever. Going on? <laughs> yeah. And then coincidentally, and then coincidental when you leave taking that shot, you get pulled over by police officers, and you lose the case, and now he got it. She gotta put two and two gotta together. Gotta put two and two together. Yeah. And Nancy is doing the same thing. Yep. And I'm like, it's, it's all making sense now. Yeah. Well, now this is a really good show, man. It's a it really is good, good show. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we might be overthinking it. Who knows? This is a good <laughs> show. But anyway, straight from the VA. Dirty, dirty style. Two up. Two, two down. Holla. Bye.